as Acting Assistant Administration for USAID's Latin America and Caribbean Bureau. Mr. Olive, sir. Now, some consider it a good sound bite to say that Venezuela represents the failure of socialism. But we should be honest that Venezuela is not a socialist country. It's a kleptocracy. kleptocracy. It's a cruel and oppressive regime, pocketing every dollar it can, even if it means that the country's people are li literally starving to death. Nowhere is Nicolas Maduro's disregard for his fellow Venezuelans clearer than his decision to block humanitarian aid from entering the country last week at the Colombia-Venezuela border. Testimony will be included in the record of this hearing, and now I'd like, and I'd like to recognize the current crisis highlights the horrifying impact of socialism. Those who continue to preach or show sympathy do not understand its history and the abject suffering it has caused. Let us be clear, the suffering of the Venezuelan people at the hands of the Maduro regime is not caused only by its ideology. The Maduro regime is full of criminals that oversee a mafia state backed by U.S. adversaries like Cuba, Russia, China, and Iran, and is linked to drug trafficking and other illicit activities. To see in Venezuela. Hold on. The Venezuelan desire for freedom has galvanized a global effort on behalf of interim President Guaido. As a result of this growing pressure, there is a storm brewing inside the Maduro regime that will eventually bring it to an end. While it is impossible to predict the moment this will happen, we believe the current political and economic environment is unsustainable and that he will not be able to weather it much longer. For we have always recognized that the solution to Venezuela's political and economic crisis must be led and achieved by the Venezuelan people. The U.S. government role is to support that effort. And as we meet today, Mr. Chairman, the State Department and its interagency partners are hard at work responding to Interim President Guaido's call for international humanitarian assistance. We invite international partners to join us in helping to fill warehouses and assistance centers with basic supplies that Venezuelan people so desperately need. We May I remind the chair will remind all persons in the audience if if we have to clear the the hearing of spectators, we'll do it. Question is. Will the Trump administration reassess its historically low refugee admission numbers, and will President Trump grant temporary protected status, or TPS, to the many Venezuelans here in the United States? I can't speak about the broader uh, refugee question. It's just not within my own remit. On the question of Venezuelans uh, in particular, uh, the doors are not closed, certainly for those who uh, have a reasonable uh, fear of persecution and can apply for political asylum. But on the broader question, uh, I think you're raising an important question, and it's one that I intend to discuss with the Secretary when he uh, completes the current trip to Europe, the question of, of Venezuelans who are in the United States. So has the administration assessed the humanitarian impact of these sanctions on the Venezuelan people? If there's not a quick transaction, have you considered the impact on U.S. refineries and their employees, which process Venezuelan oil. Well, I don't think the sanctions alone are going to have that impact. But in any event, we want to do a very big humanitarian surge uh, with the many allies we have in this effort to help the Venezuelan people to make sure that their own situation is not worsened. Ranking member. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Abrams, um, I think we really have it.